Now, I ain't one to gossip, but I will bring you the tea. Welcome to Chronicle Speak. Girl, when I tell you I had to put on my good reading glasses to get down to this Quincy Jones interview, child, because he started spilling the tea and it went all the way down. Now, Quincy Jones is a talented musical genius and producer. The man knows talent and when he sees it, he gets you to exude your gifts, honey. He's worked with Duke Ellington, Frank Sinatra, Michael Jackson. He got Will Smith his own show, Queen Latifah her own show, and did the same with LL Cool J. Well, now Quincy Jones can go down in the history books for giving one of the most interesting down-to-earth interviews ever. And probably the first interview ever that single-handedly used the word yeah, more than Samuel L. Jackson himself, child. Now, the interviewer asked him about the late, great Michael Jackson and what was something that people don't understand about him. Now, Quincy Jones stated that he hated to get into this publicly, but that hate quickly turned into spilling the beans, honey, because the next word out of his mouth was Michael stole a lot of stuff. He stole a lot of songs. Donna Summer's State of Independence, which was recorded by Donna Summers in 1982 and produced by Quincy Jones, and Michael Jackson helped with the backing of the vocals. Now, the interviewer notes that the song sounds a lot like Michael Jackson's hit song, Billie Jean. He also notes that last year, Quincy Jones won a lawsuit over the royalty dispute against Jackson's estate and Billie Jean. Quincy Jones said, the notes don't lie, man. He said, Michael's just greedy. He's just greedy, man. Greg Filling Gaines wrote the C-section of Michael Jackson's song, Don't Stop Till You Get Enough. And Michael should have given him at least 10% of the song, and he didn't. Now, what I'm trying to figure out is why is Quincy Jones spilling all of this when the man is no longer here to defend himself? Now, I know if Michael still was here, the most he'd probably say was, it's not true. But at least we'd hear something, right? Now, he said, I used to kill him about all of that plastic surgery, man. He would try to justify it and say that he had some kind of disease. Bullshit. He said his father used to call him ugly and abuse him. So what do you expect? Then y'all remember Marlon Brando from The Godfather, right? He said Marlon Brando used to go cha-cha dancing with us. He could dance his ass off. He was the most charming motherfucker you'll ever meet. He'd fuck anything. Anything. He'd fuck a mailbox, James Baldwin, Richard Pryor, and Marvin Gaye. I said you shut your mouth when you talking about Marvin Gaye. Don't you ever talk about that man like that. Now, the whole tea that got spilt about Richard Pryor was not that surprising, honey, because you remember he said that he met this woman named Matrasha at the candy store club in Hollywood, honey. They started kissing, they started dancing, flirting, he took her home, they did some cocaine, and then they got down to business. Well, the next time he met Matrasha, honey, Matrasha forgot to do the whole tuck and fold, but he said he really didn't care. Now, the gag is, Jennifer Lee, who is Richard Pryor's widow, said that the thing about Marlon Brando definitely was true, and Richard Pryor was definitely open about his bisexuality. Now, she also noted that cocaine was a hell of a drug, honey, and that's the reason why Richard Pryor was out there doing all that stuff. She said cocaine had you out there effing a radiator, honey, and then sending the flowers afterwards. But Marvin Gaye, child, I just, I didn't see that one coming. Y'all have to talk about it down below and tell me if y'all saw that one coming, because I ain't see that one coming. Then he started talking about Trump. He said he's one crazy motherfucker, limited mentally, a megalomaniac, narcissist, and I can't stand him. I used to date Ivanka, you know. Child interviewer was like, hold up, wait. He was like, yes, sir, 12 years ago, Tommy Hilfiger, who was working with my daughter Kadada, said Ivanka wants to have dinner with you. He said, no problem. She's a fine motherfucker. She had beautiful legs, the most beautiful legs I've ever seen in my life. Wrong father, though. So he didn't necessarily say that it went further, but he didn't necessarily say that it didn't, Chad. So who's to say? Ivanka, you little nasty. <laughs> so then he started talking about Oprah running for president. He said, I don't think she has the chops for it. If you haven't been a governor of a state or a CEO of a company or a military general, you don't have the know-how to lead people. But Oprah does have her own company. And he said, a symphony conductor knows more about how to lead than most business people. More than Trump does. He doesn't know shit. Somebody who knows about real leadership wouldn't have as many people against him as he does. He's a fucking idiot. Child, when I say Quincy Jones ain't got no filter, honey, him turned at 85, then turned him C now, honey. This man then went straight on crazy. Child, he say he know who got Kennedy, honey, but y'all know I ain't about to get into that mess, honey. Y'all ain't about to have them folks at my house talking about Doc, Doc, little Pig, little Pig, let me in. Hell to the no, to the no, no, no. Although he said he does not like the state of music, he does like Bruno Mars, Chance the Rapper, and Kendrick Lamar. He also gave props to Ed Sheeran and Sam Smith. So although he might be a little C now right now, he's still got a good ear for music. Well, child, this interview is a very good read. There's a lot of surprising things in there, stuff that'll have you laugh. And this man is straight up crazy, honey, but I love it. I want you guys to look at the interview or read the interview and tell me what you think about it. And let's talk about it down below. Leave a comment, like, share, and subscribe, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.